Good evening. This is the Pinellas County Redistricting Board meeting of October 27th, 2021. Uh, my name is Brian Unks. I'm the board chair. I'm going to ask the board members present to introduce themselves uh, starting on my right. Good evening. I'm uh, Jim Everett. I'm Mary Lou Ambrose. Mark Weinkrantz. Johnny Boykins. Mr. Vos. Not a board member, but your attorney, Wade Vos. Good evening, uh, Bruce Livingston. Allison Nall. Ron Schultz. Well, thank you all very much. And just a reminder to the board members that when you are speaking, uh, please make sure your microphone is on. Um, and the other thing that I was requested uh, by the clerk is that um, whoever makes a motion or seconds a motion, we need to clearly identify who that was on the record. I know a lot of times in board meetings, multiple people will second a motion, but um, tonight I'll try to clarify who that was um, so that we make that clear um, on the record. Um, our next agenda item is the approval of the minutes from October 6th of 2021. Are there any additions, corrections to the minutes that were provided by staff? If not, do I have a motion to approve? Ron Schultz, motion to approve. Mr. Schultz. Bruce Livingston, second. Mr. Livingston, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes unanimously. Now we move on to public comment. I will start with members of the public who are in the room this evening, uh, and then we'll open it up to any members of the public who are attending virtually. I should also mention that um, our consultant, Mr. Spitzer, is attending the meeting virtually as he did last time, so uh, he is present with us, but uh, over Zoom. Um, and members of the public, just a reminder, you have three minutes to speak. I'll be keeping track of that up here. And uh, again, just another gentle reminder that this is the redistricting board. Uh, we're advisory to the county commission. Uh, our purview is to provide data and feedback to the county commission regarding the districts. Um, so any other topics that aren't germane to those issues, really, um, we have no uh, authority over anything other than that. Um, so we'll start with Mr. Barkley, Joseph A. Barkley three. Uh, and you will have three minutes, sir. Thank you very much. Um, my comment is uh, general uh, with regard to the maps themselves. Uh, it's pretty difficult to identify the specifics. Uh, and I tried to do this also at home, and I was not successful. But my main concern is that we have, uh, in districts four, five, and six, and seven, uh, done some minor changes that may, in fact, result in uh, a gentrifying process for these districts, such that uh, the clout of individual voters uh, will be changed. And uh, so I, I just want to make sure that when we're doing this, this is not simply for uh, making changes to allow everyone to get a vote, but it also is important that those votes uh, count in the way in which they were intended by the voter. And so therefore, I want to make sure that we are not uh, adding in uh, wealthier districts with less wealthy districts so that we, in effect, change the uh, net result of the districts themselves. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, I'm having an issue with the counter, but that's okay. Um, okay, Miss Freeze, Lois Freeze. Thank you, everyone. And I hope you see I have some difficulty getting around. So <clears throat> just so you know, this is a very important issue for me because I believe that between this and suppressing votes uh, are the two most dangerous ways that we can affect our democracy. And I think at this point in time, we have to be very concerned about it. In Florida, which is a 50-50 uh, state, We've, we're often called the purple state, we have a Senate and a House, an assembly, 
and uh, they both uh, seem to have an overwhelming uh, 78 to 42 Republicans to Democrats in the uh, House. 78 to 42, that's almost a two to one majority. The Senate is better, it's only 23 to 16. But how in a 50-50 state do we get to a 78 to 42 Republican over Democrat majority? Now, we have passed the Fair Districts Amendment. I don't know why it hasn't had an effect in 2020. It did have an effect in uh, the constitutional, uh, the congressional federal um, districts, but didn't seem to hit the states much at all, the state. So I'm wondering why that is. And I hope that we make this a fair democracy because ever since I learned what gerrymandering was when I was a kid in high school, I have been concerned that elections are won and lost on just drawing district lines, and that is not right. This is America, the United States. I love the country. I'm the child of immigrants, and I would like to see it last. And I thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I don't know if we want to mention, but we're not considered drawing state representative and state senator districts. Right, that's correct. Meeting. So we're, we're limited to the county commission and we're advisory to the county commission who will make the ultimate decision. Um, my next card is uh, John Patrick Estock. Did I say that correctly? You will have three minutes, sir. Good evening. Uh, my name is John Estock. The reason why I'm here is uh, I voted for that charter amendment in 2016. And um, I recall one of the things I liked about it was the cities and towns had to be, it, they didn't have to be, but the best effort or whatever the language was exactly to make the cities and towns whole. And um, that's not what we have now. Um, I was the one, by the way, that, that map, uh, these pages aren't numbered, and I was citizen three, this redistricting comments in here. Um, but like all, the meetings so far seem to be all about uh, Clearwater Beach Island estates and uh, putting them into District 5, but not, you know, all, all of Clearwater. That's good, but all of Clearwater, I think, should be in one district. It, it's possible. The only one is St. Petersburg that isn't possible to put into a district. Uh, there's a bunch of them that, you know, most of the people on this board are probably kind of into politics. Which city and town in Pinellas County is divided into three different county commissioner districts? It, hint, it begins with an S. Most people would say St. Petersburg. They'd be wrong. It's Seminole. And that's, I don't know how that came about, but um, a lot of these could be easily fixed. Uh, probably the hardest one, though, is Clearwater and Largo. Um, and I'd just like to see uh, Clearwater all in one district five, four, whichever one, and Seminole, I guess it would make sense to put Seminole all in District 6. Um, you know, that's really, um, and that's, it's right, that was important. I don't know, it was a redi uh, charter review commission that came up with uh, what was voted on, I believe it was in 2016, and uh, that was important enough to them uh, to put in there, and I, you know, I think we should uh, be following that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, do we have anyone else in the room who'd like to make a public comment who hasn't turned in a comment card yet? And Mr. Lowak, do we have anyone online who would like to make a public comment? Uh, Mr. Chair, there's no one online participating. Okay, moving on to agenda item 4A. Uh, this is the updated um, information regarding the cities that are split by the current uh, Board of County Commissioners district boundaries. Um, and that packet is, uh, that, that information is in your packet. Uh, Mr. Spitzer, are you with us? Sure, I am. 
Would well, you like to present this? Let's just me? address this. Uh, yes, uh, we had uh, provided uh, this information to you previously. We've supplemented it with uh, information concerning the at-large districts that are that split cities. Um, this is a map of a Pinellas County with the single member districts uh, showing you which districts, which cities are split uh, and which uh, are not by um, the single member district boundaries. And Pinellas County is a densely populated uh, urban county with uh, 24 uh, cities. The cities that are currently split in my view by a, in a significant way are St. Petersburg and uh, the city of Clearwater. There are others that are split, uh, but I would say only in a minor uh, way. Uh, that is uh, Pinellas Park, Largo, and of course uh, Seminole. And while Seminole is split it's correct by three different uh, districts. Uh, you can see that uh, it is not a significant uh, split uh, here. And so the charter, and we're, we will follow you know, good redistricting uh, principles and we'll follow what the charter says. The charter says that the redistricting board uh, must uh, consider uh, where feasible uh, utilizing municipal boundaries when drawing the new boundaries of, of county commissioner districts. So, um, you know, it is impossible, the, this previous speaker was correct, to not uh, split the city of St. Petersburg because of size. But I, I would say also that when you get into the redistricting process, all of the population uh, in District uh, 4 uh, comes to um, around 230,000 uh, people or so. Um, and to pull all of Clearwater down means that you're going to need to move other boundaries around. And, and uh, uh, you know, you could probably not split Clearwater, but you're going to have to add some population to District 4, and that's got to come from somewhere, and it's, it might be by splitting some other city. So I, I think uh, the, the current districts and then some of the other alternatives that you're considering uh, do a, a pretty good job of uh, not splitting uh, cities to the extent that that's possible. Um, and then we also have uh, similar information for uh, the at-large uh, system, current at-large districts. Now, of course, this does uh, split cities to a, a greater extent, but remember, this is for at-large districts. Uh, my view of criteria with regard to at-large districts is that we have the same criteria. We try to follow the same policies, but they are applied in a manner which is not as sharp or as focused as they are with regard to single member uh, districts. Uh, and it would, it would be, I would say it would be nearly impossible to not split uh, some cities uh, with the at-large residence uh, districts. So uh, Mr. Chair, we had just discussed this uh, at the last meeting um, and we when we have uh, final maps that you want to consider, uh, you know, we will prepare information on, you know, how the extent to which they, they split municipal boundaries. My suggestion to the redistricting board is that you really focus in on uh, the single member districts when looking at whether or not they split cities as opposed to the at-large districts. So Mr. Spitzer, when we're looking at Seminole, um, that's the green um, portion of the map by Park Boulevard uh, and Seminole. It looks like there's a very small sliver of it that goes into District 5. 
the vast majority of it is in District 6, and then there's a little sliver of it uh, that by the Bay Pines that is in District 7. Is that right? That's, that's correct. That's right. Okay. And I could see where it would be pretty easy to take the District 5 portion and move it into District 6. I'm not so sure what impact moving the portion that's across the water from District 7 into District 6 would do. But, um, I mean, th that one seems, the split there seems very, very minor to the point where it, it should be, it, you know, it looks like it'd be relatively easy to put Seminole into one district. Um, so I guess one of my questions is, for the alternatives that we're considering at our next meeting um, on November 3rd, could we have the split information for each alternative so that we can evaluate? Because basically the split information we have now is on the current model, and it would be ideal, because I can't tell from looking at the alternatives that we have, what the splits are, if they've changed, if they've gotten more significant, less significant. So I think it would be helpful for us to see the municipal splits um, on the alternative maps, or, or at least have that data um, like you've provided for the current system. Is that something you can provide? Yes, sir. Uh, I will tell you that uh, for the for alternative one and two for single member districts, the only changes that were made were to the boundaries between District 4 and 5. They, the, two, the first two single member district alternatives changed those boundaries in two different ways. However, uh, neither of the, in fact, all of the three alternatives for single member districts made no changes to districts uh, 6 and 7. Um, we, you know, I, I, I hesitate to comment on the, uh, the ease with which this might be remedied. We, once you start moving population from one location to another, uh, uh, maybe the resulting changes are so insignificant that you don't need to make any other changes. However, uh, that's not always the case, and, and so you might have to start moving population back and forth, and these, you know, alternatives become more complicated than what they what they seem. Okay. Any other questions or comments regarding the municipal splits, Mr. Everett? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, j I just had one comment about the most recent subject matter. So, if we took the line down on Bay Pines, then we're going to be taking additional population away from District. Seven, which is already down a little over 1,700 people. So I don't know. I could see moving the north border. That might not be as effectual. But I, I don't know how many people are in that little sliver down yeah, there. Yeah, I agree. So I, I don't know. Yeah. It might be minor. I don't know. Well, and the other thing, too, is, I mean, it does seem, uh, it does catch your attention that you have three single-member districts for one city. But then when you actually look at it on the map, it does appear to impact a very, very, very small population of that city. Um, so I think what we're what we're asked to do by the charter is to ensure, as feasible as possible, that cities, you know, are in one district. Um, but keep in mind, you know, many cities are very aggressively annexing, and you know, when you see Largo and Clearwater and St. Petersburg, I mean, cities are irregular shapes. It's just kind of the nature of cities and they're constantly changing their boundaries. Um, so I'm not as necessarily troubled by Seminole because it does appear to be relatively minor in terms of the, the area that, that is in District 5 and District 7. But uh, I do, as a principal, want to stick, try to stick with municipalities as much as possible, practicable in the same district, um, understanding that it's impossible to have all of them in, you know, intact in one district. Uh, any other comments on the city issue? Uh, Ms. Ambrose. Um, I'm a little bit confused about District 1 um, at the, in the enlarged, uh, at large district. This looks a little like the uh, 
the map at the top of the state where it looks like a serpent going through. This is a, this is, was, the districts were supposed to be contingent. And that, if that's contingent, I, I, quite frankly, I have trouble reading the names of the cities in here on the, the print, but that can't be one city. It's gotta be, uh, I, I just, how did that get like that? So it looks like, and Mr. Spitzer, you, you correct me if I'm wrong, it looks like the purple portion in District 1 is Oldsmar. There is a portion that unfortunately is very close to orange that is not quite orange, that is Safety Harbor. And then there's an orange portion that is Clearwater, uh, where Clearwater is split, it looks like, along US 19. Uh, and then you've got a portion in the pink red that is Largo. Uh, and then you've got a portion of Pinellas Park, uh, Western Pinellas Park. You've got Kenneth City, and then you've got a portion of West St. Petersburg, and then you've got a significant portion of Seminole. Then you have Reddington Beach, North Reddington Beach, Reddington Shores, and I'm a, I don't know what beach that is, but uh, Indian Shores. Okay, so Mr. Spitzer, do you care to comment on the current District 1? And uh, certainly, I mean, yeah, I don't disagree with Ms. Ambrose. It's it's an it, it's an odd odd shape. It is. This this is uh, basically the shape that was adopted uh, uh, 20 years ago. Um, and remember, these the at-large districts are these are residence areas uh, where the candidates for county commission within which they must reside. Um, and, but however, all of the voters uh, throughout Pinellas County, no matter where they live, had the opportunity to vote for or against uh, one of the candidates uh, for an at-large seat. So again, the, the criteria are, are applied to at-large systems in a manner that is not as uh, focused or as sharp as they are in single member uh, districts. Now, um, there are two alternatives to uh, the at-large system that, you know, we have prepared for your consideration. Uh, one uh, sort of creates a, a North County, Middle County and South County residence area. Uh, and then the other uh, is sort of a uh, a blending of the current system with the north, middle, and south county systems. So the districts kind of go in a diagonal manner uh, across the county. But those are alternatives that you could consider. But it, with 24 cities in a densely populated county, uh, I. I I can, I'll, I'll predict that it's, it's uh, virtually impossible to not split some uh, cities and it, it's probably uh, even much more difficult than it already is with regard to the single member district boundaries. Okay, um, any other comments on the current city split or questions um, on the current city split of the current districts? Yes, ma'am, Ms. Null. Mr. Spitzer, am I reading this correctly too that in District 1 there's a little tiny bit of tarpon as well that's not included? Or is that a green um, spot on the map? Well, that's the current districts. And uh, yes, that uh, there is a little tiny bit of, of the city of Tarpon Springs that is not currently in, uh, I, I assume that's District 1. Uh, that is something that could be remedied. Uh, you know, if, for example, just as an example, if you were to adopt, you, you as a policy matter, you said, we think that this is a, an acceptable recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners, the current uh, boundaries, uh, but you wanted to make some uh, tweaks to it, you could, uh, adjust that boundary so that it encompasses 
all of uh, the city of Tarpon Springs into one district. Um, that's that's uh, relatively, I, I don't know how many people that is, but I, that's relatively easy to do. Some of these other ones are, as you can imagine, much more difficult than, than uh, that. Yes, Mr. Weinkrantz. Uh, just uh, kind of a counterpoint issue is, uh, Mr. Spitzer, I believe 30% of the population is uh, unincorporated districts, is that correct? Unincorporated areas? Um. Uh, my point is, uh, and I understand the urge to keep the cities together, but we're kind of like the forgotten cousins on an unincorporated area here. And if uh, we're doing the best we can to reflect keeping the cities together, but taking it to an extreme, if Clearwater voted for, as a block and had their own county commissioner along with their own mayor, where does it leave 30% of the population in the county? So it almost to, to serve uh, the unincorporated districts, which have not come up for discussion yet, uh, we do need a blend here to balance things out. And I don't know if that was the initial intention when these districts were drawn originally, but uh, uh, the unincorporated districts are heavily weighted to the north, uh, I believe. Isn't that correct? Yes, uh, I'm not sure of, about the the population of the total unincorporated area, but it is significant. Uh, and I might add too, by the way, that and the uh, attorney can can correct me if I'm wrong, but that phrase in the charter, speaking about uh, trying to follow uh, municipal boundaries, there's a second part of that phrase that also to the effect uh, basically says uh, trying to keep uh, the unincorporated areas uh, intact, I, something like that. I don't have that in front of me right now, but it's something to that effect. Mr. Bose, do you have that or can you pull it up? I do, yeah. The, the particular uh, language on that uh, says, further in developing its proposals, the County Redistricting, Redistricting Board shall consider, where feasible, utilizing municipal boundaries and keeping together unincorporated areas of the county. As Mr. Spitzer has indicated before, whenever we're looking at criteria for redistricting, it's always balancing. Those two things right there in, in and of themselves, and this was recognized by the Charter Review Commission when they were looking at this proposal, those two pieces of that one requirement or directive counterbalance each other. They, they, they militate against each other. So you can never get at 100% with regard to any of these. These are guiding principles that you would look at. Okay. And that goes to my point that uh, trying to keep the cities intact goes against the balance of keeping the unincorporated areas represented as well. Understood. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Boykins, did you have a comment or question? Uh, yes. I'm going to go back to the Seminole uh, question. Um, so is Mr. Spitzer saying that if we make the tweak to include those two little areas that it would adversely impact the maps that currently exist right now? So, Mr. Spitzer, I think this was back on the single member district map. Yes. Seminoles also split I, on the at large district map as well, but um, yeah, I'm talking. Yeah, I'm talking about this, the uh, the single, single member, member yes, district. Yes, sir. Uh, if if this is something that you want to, to pursue, I could. Um, I'm I'm happy to look at this and remember that if this is a policy uh, uh, objective that you decide to pursue, this this could be done in tandem with uh, either of, well, with alternatives one or two for single member districts, because this, these boundary changes that you're speaking of here uh, affect, uh, don't affect uh, the northern half, the northern portion of the county. Al alternatives one and two differ only because of, only by the uh, change in boundary between district four and district five. Uh, so, but uh, we're happy to look at this if, if if you wish to do this. As the chair said, you know you you could change this boundary uh, and make a recommendation. If the county commission uh, adopted it, it would be, become uh, a new policy. But that does not uh, stop a city from uh, you know further annexing uh, one way or another. I, Mr. Chair, 
Yes, Mr. Everett. Thank you. Um, it, it would also, Mr. Spitzer, affect districts six and seven in that small piece down by Bay Pines. Yes, sir. Sure would. Right. Okay. Any other questions or comments on the current municipal splits? No? Okay. Uh, I believe Board Member Owen, moving on to 4B, requested the services contract with KSA. That has been provided in your packet. Does anyone have any questions or comments regarding the services agreement with KSA that has been approved by the County Commission? Okay, moving on to 4C. Mr. Spitzer, we had uh, several, I believe four public uh, forums that were held uh, online via Zoom, advertised by the county. Uh, we were going to review the comments that were received uh, by the public at, uh, at those meetings. Yes, sir. I would say that uh, the comments received, uh, generally speaking, um, patterned uh, the discussion that you've had uh, uh, thus far this, this evening. Uh, there and some of the people that uh, made comments like online uh, have appeared before you this evening as well. Uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, there were uh, comments that were received about not splitting uh, uh, municipalities by county commission uh, district uh, boundaries. Although uh, there were some uh, people who also said that uh, we should. Uh, uh, not consider uh, splitting municipal boundaries as a as a significant uh, policy objective, but simply draw the uh, district boundaries based on purely on population. Uh, so I think it, it was a a little bit of a of a mixed uh, bag of comments that we uh, received during the the process, um, and I, I don't think that there was. Uh, a clear, I would say, overwhelming uh, direction to go one way or another uh, based on comments that were received during the, the public workshops. Okay. Um, any questions or comments on item 4C related to the comments from the public during the public workshops? Yes, Mr. Weinkrantz. And just appreciate the public input. I uh, just uh, people taking time out of their day to get caught up on this stuff. So just thank you to yeah, whoever made it. Yeah, thank you very much for caring about this. It's very much appreciated, and I wish we had more public input. So, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mr. Boykins. Yeah. Um, so I did uh, receive some feedback uh, from the public um, that folks didn't have access to the maps. Do we know if the maps that we are considering are? easily accessible on the website because uh, I don't think the public knows how to get to them. So I would like to, to make sure that we Absolutely. Get that uh, Mr. Spitzer, Mr. Lowak, whoever wants to handle that, like how do we make sure that the public can very easily access the maps online? Sure. So the maps, um, if, if the comment came early on in the process, I think there was a little delay in getting those maps up. We had to make sure that those were ADA compliant before we posted them online. Uh, so if, if those con some of the folks who were on the first meeting, um, those maps weren't posted at that time. They have since been posted. Um, all of the alternatives are posted on the Pinellas County Redistricting Board website. Um, you can access all the um, videos uh, from the public input meetings, all the videos uh, from these meetings, uh, as well as all the board materials and um, map alternatives. And can you give that web address, please? If you got it, sorry to put you on the spot. It's it's going to be uh, PinellasCounty.org, and um, the redistricting page. Kurt, I believe you've got the exact hyperlink. I don't want to get it wrong with you know. I, I've got it up right now. Actually, it's it's a relatively simple URL. It's uh, www.PinellasCounty.org/boards/slash redistricting okay so that leads me to believe that if you went to the Pinellas County website you can mm -hmm. click on the link that says boards and then you can click on the redistricting board or you could type in pinellascounty.org backslash boards backslash redistricting okay 
Yeah, Mr. Chair. I, yes, Mr. Everett. So I attended all four community meetings, and I think the first one, Brian, was the only one where we didn't have the maps up, but I know you announced the URL on all three of the other meetings. Thank you. Okay, um, any other comments before we move on to item five, discussion of alternative redistricting plans? Okay, item five. Um, I think I wanna start, if okay, with the board, with the single member districts. We have uh, three alternatives. Um, we discussed alternative one and alternative two at our October 6th meeting. Alternative three was developed uh, based on our request at that meeting. Uh, and then you've also got an Excel-like spreadsheet that provides you with the demographic information uh, for the uh, current plan and the alternative plans. Um, so Mr. Spitzer, I will uh, go ahead and turn it over to you to introduce this item, uh, starting with the single member districts. Yes, sir. Uh, I put the uh, statistics up on the screen first. Uh, at the last meeting, there was a request made that to, to have a, a single a document that showed the various statistics for any alternative plan with, uh, as compared to the statistics for the current, at, well, current system. And so here is the single member districts uh, currently, uh, it's a, very, very good uh, tolerances here of uh, a difference between the largest and the smallest uh, district of uh, less than three, three points or so, um, maybe a little bit more than that. But all of the plans, the uh, alternatives are, are quite acceptable in terms of a, a population number, the deviation from the, the mean. Remember that the first two plans began by moving Clearwater Beach into District 5, and the alternative number two moved a little bit more of District 4 into District 5, and then both plans made, it, made up that population difference by moving uh, the countryside area uh, and perhaps a little bit south of countryside from District 5 into District 4. Uh, the alternative plan number three took a very different approach and um, split the northern part of the county uh, in a north-south manner so that the unincorporated area uh, was shared uh, between two of the single-member district county commission districts. That was the policy objective of that particular uh, plan. So a little bit of a different approach, uh, uh, but uh, one, at least in this model here, where um, the deviations from the mean are quite uh, acceptable. And by the way, if you look at alternative three, speaking of uh, the city of Tarpon Springs, you can look on the, uh, at the northern end of the county and, and you'll see a little bit of a different shape from the at-large uh, districts. And that was to ensure that uh, all of uh, Tarpon Springs uh, was retained in uh, the western uh, district there, which would be district uh, four. So that's the, uh, the single member uh, plans. Uh, and uh, if I might, Mr. Chair, just to look at the statistics for the the two at large uh, uh, actually, plans. Actually, Mr. Spitzer, let's um, let's talk about the single member first because I don't want to okay. I don't want to confuse I'll confuse myself by mixing mixing those all up. So, um, board members, I've been advised our meeting our our last meeting is next Wednesday, one week from tonight. And if we want to see any other alternatives to what we have before us, we have to ask for that and articulate it tonight. So if you have concerns, pressing issues, other things, other proposals you'd like to see drawn out with the data um, to consider voting on, we're not voting on these tonight, but we will be voting on them at the next meeting. Um, we need to give that guidance to Mr. Spitzer tonight. So that's why I kind of wanted to drill down a little bit more 
on what we have before us and get Mr. Spitzer some specific feedback on those. So I'd like to start with the single member just so we can keep that in one silo and then we can move over to the that large. Mr. Ever. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Not not to put more on your plate, Mr. Spitzer, but we'd already commented about it. I, I would be interested to know the effect of moving uh, those two pieces of Seminole uh, that we discussed earlier. One piece uh, we would move south and the other piece we would move north. So to get all of Seminole into one district. It, did, it didn't look like a large geographic area, but I have no, no idea what the population effect is. And we, Mr. Spitzer, we can, we can look, look at that. like a uh, complimentary. Mr. Rubel, that, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, I was just going to say complimentary to that change. If you look up at the top of, uh, I believe it was District 5, or excuse me, District 6, uh, there's a section of um, Clearwater that is not included in District 5 that could be a swap for population. Yeah, I'm, l let me drill down on that, Mr. Rubel. So are you speaking about um, countryside being split between District 4 and District 5? and Sand Key being in District 5, whereas Clearwater Beach and uh, Island Estates are in District 4, or are you speaking about a different part of Clearwater? I don't think there's any, there's no part of Clearwater that's south of Sand Key, no, unless I'm is, looking at the yeah, wrong Yeah, this map. is um, actually, if you, it, it's over by um, um, the Feather Sound area. Okay, Looks yeah. Like, that, excuse me, I said Clearwater, I meant Largo. Largo, okay, very yeah, I'm good. Sorry, I, I, said I thought I knew Clearwater. I spoke there, yeah. Okay, so Largo, oh, you're talking about uh, this pink portion off of Almerton. Correct. Um, that is uh, just north of Almerton. It's a little square. And then there's another square above that in the South High Point area. Is that what you're talking about? Correct. Okay. So just thinking if we're trying to, to keep the populations even. Uh, that might be an, an area where we could accomplish keep uh, not breaking up the city of Largo between districts and, and fixing Seminole at the, same, at the same time. Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Spitzer, did you understand uh, that? I, I, I hope you're seeing my screen here now. This is the uh, uh, GIS software. Are you speaking of this area here? Yes. And here? Uh, were you speaking of that area as well, <laughs> Mr. Rupa? I didn't identify Well, I, I wasn't specifically, but I, th I think that would be for, up for consideration as well. Uh, the second area, the, the first one uh, was what I was speaking of the, around Olmerton. Okay, Mr. Spitzer, does that, is that clear? Yes. Okay, Ms. Yeah. Ambrose. Um, I'm looking at these figures and my concern last time was keeping the communities together, the, the black community, and not diluting the black or the Latino community. And my question was, with the plan that was brought out last time, does moving the, the, you know, the, the beaches in and moving part of Clearwater out, how much does that affect that? And I, had, I, I look at this and it looks like the population is identical no matter what no matter which number we're on as far as the, the black community, the percentages. Um, you know, it might be off a, a point one or two, but that's it. Um, but it doesn't tell me that the black community, say, would be able to vote as the block that it's always voted as, because that was one of the things that was to be protected under the lawsuits. So, uh, Mr. Spitzer, if I'm understanding that question correctly, between alternative one and alternative two, alternative one moves a portion of the countryside area north of uh, Enterprise Road into District 4, and it moves um, Clearwater Beach and Island Estates into District 5. Alternative two moves the entire portion of countryside from Sunset Point Road north into District 4. It moves a portion south of Sunset Point Road, which I would describe as the Coachman Ridge area, uh, into District 5. Uh, and then it maintains Clearwater Beach and Island Estates in District 5, as opposed to um, in District 4. So the question is, do you have information or data on whether that, that impacts uh, communities of interest um, and minority access? Uh, you know, does that does that change anything in terms of 
uh, access to representation and um, the voting contingent of communities of interest? Uh, well, uh, the on your uh, spreadsheet of uh, statistics, you can uh, yeah, look, compare one plan to another and uh, the statement is correct that the, the, the statistics are are very, very similar. Now some of these would be slightly different if we had gone out two or three decimal points instead of just just one. Uh, but they are very, very uh, similar. And remember that both uh, the plan uh, one, the alternatives one and two and and three, uh, make no changes to uh, District 6 or 7. So those st statistics remain the same. Uh, the, the, and, and the, the uh, African American Influence District uh, uh, still remains uh, District 7, which encompasses most of the St. Petersburg uh, area. So I, I don't think any of these uh, changes are uh, statistically significant they're 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 almost identical in one plan to another uh, so that I you know that it's a good question but I think the answer is there it's not a change that uh, is uh, significant enough uh, to be concerned with okay Ms. Ambrose um, you have I mean, a follow-up yeah just uh, I, I just find it unusual that these numbers are so much the same when you're moving blocks of people from one place to another, that the numbers come out to exactly the same numbers. I mean, it would be really great if that's so, but I find it difficult to, to really get that through my brain that, that, yeah. that, that can really happen. Yeah. Um, Mr. Ever. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I think in alternative plan three for the single member districts, there was some movement um, of the minority population percentage wise, if you look at that. I think between alternatives one and two, there was not significant percentage movement, but in three, there was. There was yeah. more there, but it's, it's kind of pretty insignificant. Okay. Uh, Mr. Boykins, did you have a comment? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, um, can you can we just have Mr. Spitzer explain alternative three? Because I'm I'm trying to figure out where yeah. we're moving these from to get a better understanding of what communities we are talking about. Yeah, sure. And I, and I, just so I I'll preface it because I think this was kind of my I threw this out at the last meeting. So, in my view, you know, we're doing the due diligence for the county commission and we're presenting them with options. That that's my view of what we're doing and data options and data. We're not telling them this is the best way to do it, this is the only way to do it. We're giving them choices. And one of the choices is the current system. Um, and so one of the thoughts that uh, had been suggested was to make the current districts four and five look more like the current districts one and two of the at-large districts. Again, not saying that that's the way they should go or that that's a good idea. But the idea was to split those districts north to south as opposed to east to west. So, Mr. Spitzer, can you give us, uh, this is the first time we're, we're seeing this, and can you break Chairman, down alternative three for us? I think, and we, yeah. I know one of the, it, just to, to re, uh, restate it, I think one of the motivations there was to lessen the workload uh, related to the unincorporated areas uh, that don't have city uh, representation through city government. Yes, sir, in the North County, yes, sir. That's right. And on that point, let me just, the black lines here are the current uh, district boundaries. Here are the municipalities and the unincorporated area. So you, there's a, a large area of uh, unincorporated Pinellas County here in the northern end of the county. So the single member districts currently look like this. The first alternative that you asked us to look at moved Clearwater Beach from District 4 into District 5. And to make up that difference in population, we moved part of the countryside area from District 5 into District 4. A second alternative 
had a similar starting point. But shut this off. Um, but continued uh, along, uh, I believe this is the Sunset Sunset Point Road uh, and, as a boundary line, and move this part of District Four into District Five, and then all of this from District Five into District Four. The third alternative, which the chair had mentioned, was to uh, adopt a very different uh, policy, and here is the the boundary line between these two dif districts. It takes a, a north-south approach as opposed to a more or less east-west approach. And to, uh, again, to show you the, the unincorporated area here, here you'd see where the unincorporated area, instead of being all in one particular district, is split amongst uh, two. Um, the rest of the plan, uh, districts uh, six and seven remain unchanged, but four and five are very different than what they had been uh, in the past. And I, I think uh, uh, splitting this area of unincorporated area and, and having two commissioners who are elected from uh, areas that contain a significant uh, amount of unincorporated area, that's the policy objective of alternative three for the uh, single member district plan. So in addressing Mr. Boykin's question, it looks like in terms of municipalities that would split Clearwater and Largo between east and west. Is that right? And is that along US 19 or is that along McMullen Booth Road? I believe it's US 19. I believe that's 19. Okay. Um, so that, that, those are the municipalities you'd be impacting, East and West Clearwater, East and West Largo. And, and yes. I, I have a quick procedural question, if I could. Uh, this is not an endorsement or a discarding of alternative three, but should we move in that direction, which district, which side becomes number four and which side becomes number five? Do we decide that, or is that decided elsewhere? Mr. Vose? The, the Board of County Commissioners ultimately decides it and decides how those would be labeled and so on. We can make a, you all can make a recommendation with regard to it. Keep in mind, no current elected official will be impacted by this uh, so long as their term is intact. So in other words, uh, even if the district boundaries change, they will serve out their term regardless of where they live uh, because they were duly elected um, at that time. Uh, unlike Hillsborough, where everyone has to run again. In Hillsborough, it's somewhat more controversial because all of the commissioners are up for election whenever they do redistricting. So that makes it a little more intense, I would say. Um, okay, any other questions or comments on the single member district alternatives one, two, three? Any other alternatives you all would like to see other than addressing Tarpon Springs uh, and Seminole? Yes, Ms. Freeze, uh, I'll give you three minutes if you'd like to comment on this. Oh, uh, ma'am, I'm so sorry. You're going to have to come up to the microphone, or someone's going to have to give okay. her a microphone. I, I just have a Take your time. Take your time. There's no rush. Okay. Oh, good. Thanks. I am so sorry that I wasn't aware of these meetings before this time, but I have a very um, basic question. I see where Clearwater and Clearwater Beach are together in the same districts, but St. Petersburg and St. Pete Beach are not. Is that because the di of the difference in uh, wealth of the communities, or why are they separated like that? Uh, Ma'am, uh, typically for public comment, we wouldn't interact in terms of me asking you questions and you asking me questions. You can ask me questions, but I shouldn't ask you questions, but I'm going to. Are you looking at the single member districts, four, I'm looking, five, six, and seven, or the I'm looking at the single member district alternative three. I mean, and I'm uh, two and two and one are exactly the same. That they cut off St. Pete Beach from uh, St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg Beach is a different city. St. Petersburg Beach is not a part of the city yeah, of St. Petersburg. I, I understand. I understand that. But we have merged a lot of the districts together 
why do we separate the beaches down in the south of the county? Okay. I think I I'm not, yeah, not going to try to argue with you okay. about it. I, just, I just was wondering if there was a particular reason for it when in the north of the county we uh, put them together with the mainland. Well, al alternative three actually splits the city of Clearwater in two pieces between east and west Clearwater between districts four and five. So alternative three would have a much more significant impact on splitting Clearwater uh, than it does between you know, St. Petersburg, which again is a separate city from St. Petersburg Beach, that's a different municipality. Um, I don't know if Mr. Spitzer would like to comment on, on that. It has nothing well, to do with wealth or anything uh, like that. Okay, it be, right. it, because all of the districts look very con, kind of contiguous, except that one wraps itself around District 7, and I was just wondering why that was, but thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Estock. First of all, you were exactly right. I omitted the unincorporated areas, and I believe it's one third of Pinellas County lives in unincorporated, and it's the opposite in Hillsborough. A third lives, it's almost all in Tampa, and then two thirds of Hillsborough. So um, the other, um, you know, that. Altern alternative three, it eviscerates Clearwater and Largo, and yet it goes out of its way to keep Dunedin and it, uh, that little bit of Tarpon Springs to put them all in. Another thing about that alternate three, um, I believe both Commissioner Eggers and Seal, they represent districts four and five, would live, they live in that district. So this East District, and you know, I don't know whichever it'll be four or five, they won't uh, I don't know who will represent them, but they won't live there. I think that's a problem. Um, I don't, I think one of the alternates, uh, pardon me, alternative uh, proposals should be, except for St. Pete, it should, you know, what would it take all these cities and towns to put them into uh, one district? I don't, I don't think it's that big of a deal. And I, you know, hearing that it is, and then I look at alternative three, which moves a lot of people, uh, Clearwater, Largo, and there's a lot of unincorporated in the center of uh, uh, Largo and Clearwater, if you're familiar. These, by the way, we gotta get maps that have municipal that in streets, and these, these I'm surprised that uh, how bad these maps are, but um, I think that should be one of the alternatives, and I, 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 I'm Catholic, so I can't say I hate alternative three, but I deeply dislike it. It, it shouldn't be considered. Thank Understood. you. Thank you. Um, any other comments from the board on this agenda item before we move on to this um, at-large district, Mr. Everett? Yeah, I'm, I'm not certain, Mr. Spitzer, perhaps you can answer this question, but I, I believe if you move St. Pete Beach, you'd heavily dilute um, the minority vote in St. Petersburg. That may be the reason that it's drawn that way. That, that's, that, that's correct. I, I, I think that uh, when the, the county went from five commissioners elected at large to a system of seven commissioners, three at large, and four single member, sort of an underlying policy objective was that uh, one district the, in the St. Pete area could be drawn so that it would be a minority influence district. And that's what was done. Uh, so, you know, you could make a, a lot of different changes here, but um, I, I do think that if you um, added St. Pete Beach, as, just as an example, to District 7 and then you know, removed a similar population from District 7 and, and put it from some other location, put it back into District 6, you you do run the risk of, of uh, you know, diluting minority voting strength uh, and, you know, the uh, associated issues that come along with that. Okay. Um, just for what it's worth, again, we won't be voting on these tonight. We'll vote on them next week. 
you know, I, I've never been a huge fan of Alternative One. I just I don't think it really goes far enough in terms of uniting um, that Clearwater area um, that's currently divided along Countryside Boulevard, I believe, or else it's landmark that the current demarcation is. I think Alternative Two does a much better job of keeping communities of interest together um, with the noted revisions related to Seminole and Tarpon that we've discussed tonight. But um, if I were voting tonight, I would I would want to toss alternative one and keep alternative two um, and alternative three along with the current system. That, that would be kind of my preference. Um, obviously, there's no harm in giving the commission more choices than less, but if we're going to give them two choices for the at-large, might as well give them two choices for the single member. That, that's at least, that's just my opinion. Um, so I just wanted to, to let you all know where I was in terms of my thinking on, on those. Okay. Yes, Mr. Livingston. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I think, uh, I tend to agree with your comments on that and, and the public opinion. Um, were you proposing, if you were, you know, a kind of voicing a, a preference, uh, what about alternative three? Was that one that you would discard at that point for further, from further consideration? I personally wouldn't because, again, I view ourselves as the due diligence committee for the county commission. I don't think that we're sending something to the county commission saying this is what you should do. I think we're saying you have constituted us under your charter to gather demographic information based on the census data and to give you choices that are informed choices with data. And then they get to make the decision. So I would rather give them real choices than say, let's move countryside to enterprise. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, it just seems like um, we should give them some actual real options. And then this debate will happen there um, in terms of whether those are you know, great choices or not great choices. Um, and I, I think that that's, in my view, that's what we're, we're here to do. I don't think we're here to veto or um, restrict their choices. And, and they, could, they could take our work product and say, thank you so much for your work, and then do something completely different. I mean, they, they have the power to do that. Um, so, I, I mean, I don't have a problem with giving them alternative three for discussion. I, you know, if I was a county commissioner, I might not vote for it, but I, I don't have a problem giving it to them for discussion, particularly if they're going to keep the current system, which has districts one and two basically demarcated the same way. Um, what's the difference between alternative three and the current at-large districts, other than everyone can vote for the at-large districts? Mr. Weinkrantz. If I could, and I believe it was... Uh Ms. Olin or Ms. Owen last time pointed out that one of her options is to make no changes, just to keep that in mind. And the lack of uh, response from the public on this could imply ambivalence or could imply contentment. And we don't know the answer, uh, but I would like to throw into the mix that people have established in these areas that we might move because the lines look better. They may or may not have relationships with their county commissioners that they value. And uh, that should be kind of included in our calculations. Okay. Any other comments on the single member before we move to at-large? Yes, Mr. Schultz. I would um, probably, uh, if I was in your seat, I wouldn't necessarily put alternative three in front of them. Um, for the matter of the perspective of what I have and a lot of the people that have talked to me that haven't gone to the meetings but actually reviewed these maps, um, I'm on the fixer board, and the fixer board's always been a struggle, as Mark's mentioned, um, for having an identity as part of the unincorporated areas. But when we're talking about uh, getting funding for certain projects for us, splitting that one side or the other part of the lake, as far as Palm Harbor is concerned, um, that would be one of the effects that would be negative and detrimental to that area as opposed to what we're dealing with now. Um, for instance, way back when the library, uh, the, uh, the library groups that get together, a lot of the cities are much stronger in their voting power than we are because we don't have that significant representation. So I would immediately be against alternative three for that matter, but I'm open to discussion. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments on single member before we move on to at large? Yes, Mr. Boyd. Yeah. I just want to echo that. Um, I'm, I'm very skeptical of, of alternative three, um, but I, you know, just hearing some of the public comment here, I would like to, to see if we could get 
a map that has all of the cities in intact with, with, without St. Petersburg you know, being the exception, just to see what that would look like if it could be done. Um, I would like to see that as a as a that's presented to the board. Are you talking about single member districts? For the single member district. Yes. Okay, so not the at large districts. No. Okay. Is that an option four that you can present to us, Mr. Spitzer, that we keep every city together except for uh, St. Petersburg? I doubt it. Okay, can um, you elaborate? Well, I I I I, I think that um, if you uh, move all of Clearwater, uh, let me get this up here for you. Um, and remove this population from District 4 and presumably put it into District 5. Um, and then remember that this population here is already in District 4. That would go into District 5 as well. This is going to be underpopulated. And it already uh, is underpopulated, be, isn't that right? Uh, it is. Um, Slight, yes, it is. It's 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 not terrible, but it's about 4,500 people underpopulated. It's the this largest deviation get, by percentage of any of the districts currently. That's true, and and if you did this, uh, I I would assure you that you'd have a spread between the largest and the smallest district of at least 10 points and more than 10 points. And, and then you run into uh, raising a red flag in the in the court system. So I just I just don't think that it's possible to do uh, to do this. Um, so, Mr. Boykin, would you want to see something that would be as as uh, many cities intact as possible, with the exceptions of Clearwater and Saint Petersburg? Is that acceptable? Um. I mean, I think that Clearwater needs to be intact. So I, 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 you know, I would rather just keep the keep the same map and, and, and tweak what we have than to to I guess you know cause a, a, a monkey wrench. But I think you know I would like the, the cities, the, particularly Clearwater, you know, which is a, a, a large city, to be intact um, as a single unit um, and figure out the rest. Yeah, I, it's just so difficult with you. You, because Clearwater Beach and San Key go so far south, and then Countryside goes so far north, that if you were to go that far south on the west and that far north on the east, there's really no geographical contiguous land to take from any other city or any other unincorporated area. Um, and I, you know, I'm a big Clearwater booster, so um, you know, I totally agree with you. I'd prefer Clearwater to have you know one representative but I, I just I don't see how it's possible I really don't yeah I, I yeah you would decimate district four from a population perspective yeah yeah so okay any other comments on single member districts before we move on to at large districts okay um, at large districts we have alternatives one and two as well as the current system uh, mr. Spitzer would you like to present on these alternatives and uh, are they the exact same that we saw on October 6th, or were there any changes? They are the exact same, uh, and you've seen, um, I'm not sure if you've seen these statistics here or yet or not, but uh, both alternatives and actually the existing uh, boundaries are, uh, you know, well within acceptable uh, tolerances in terms of deviations from the mean. Uh, in terms of the plans themselves, they take a, a very different uh, approach to um, the current districting scheme. These are the current uh, districts. The first alternative uh, runs boundaries more or less east-west. I'm sorry, I, I hit the wrong uh, 
boundary here. Um, let's see. East west instead of the north south uh, boundary. So you have a you would have a north residence area. You'd have a south residence area, and then a middle residence area for the at-large uh, commissioners and candidates to reside uh, in. The alternative uh, to that is uh, alternative two, which is a little bit of a blending of the current system in a in a, a the pure east-west line where you have boundaries that go sort of in a diagonal uh, manner from uh, northeast to southwest uh, and so forth. So it's it's a policy uh, uh, decision. Uh, and remember, I think that that in any of these plans, uh, you know, this these plans are just to identify where the candidate for office must reside. Uh, all voters within Pinellas County, no matter where they live, have the opportunity to vote for or against a particular candidate for an at-large seat. Okay, and I think we asked you this before, but just to make sure again, we I think it would be good for us to see the municipal boundaries uh, compared to the alternatives. Not not necessarily tonight, but to know that at the next meeting, is that, or, or may, maybe go ahead and show them to us now if you can. Do you have that uh, capability sure. on the GIS? Yes, sir. Um, for uh, ease of, of viewing, we'll uh, shut some of this off here. Um, this is the uh, at-large alternative number one. Uh, does split uh, Clearwater and uh, I believe this is Largo. Um, along the boundary between the north and the middle uh, district. And of course, uh, the residence area for the south district, it, it's difficult to not split the city of St. Pete, but it does, um, it runs right along here. And so, it, you know, this could be tweaked a little bit if, if this is uh, something that you're interested in pursuing. Then the alternative um, splits a little bit more, or in a different way, I should say. Um, Clearwater remains split, Largo. Um, again, in, in our experience uh, with an at-large system, it's not as uh, critical to uh, follow the, the, the normal uh, criteria as it is with uh, single-member uh, districts. Um, questions, comments from board members on these alternatives in the in the at-large districts. Yeah, Mr. just Everett. like to emphasize what uh, the point, Mr. Chairman, that uh, Mr. Spitzer made. These lines are drawn only for the residents requirement for any of the commissioners. Uh, the splitting of cities doesn't really apply here because each of the at-large commissioners represents the entire county serves the entire county. This is just, if we move to these kind of east-west boundaries, it's to go ahead and uh, realign things so there's not a concentration of residents in one set section of the, the county. That's, uh, I would put this before the county commissioners. Okay. Mr. Everett, okay. any other comments or questions about these two alternatives? Ms. Ambrose, please put your microphone on, I'm sorry. I hit it on and off. Um, I guess my, I, I listened to Ms. Fries talk about what the problem with all this redistricting is. And it sounds a lot like what I said the first day I came in here. Um, I admit to being a Democrat, but I also have a cousin who's a Republican and lives in Maryland, and he makes the same complaints about redistricting as I do, only the other way around. The fact is, the system doesn't work, and why, and this is for the record, I realize there's nothing we can do here, but the fact is, you have a statewide election, and we're within half a percent. 
you have district elections and we have the numbers that Ms. Freeze talked about. And there's something wrong with a system like that. You're and talking about the get, state legislature? Get, pardon me? You're talking about the state legislature? I'm talking about the state legislature. By the time okay. it gets to the state legislature, they don't really care about anything except where the votes come from. And I know it's true across the country. I know there's nothing to do about it, but I think it has to be mentioned. Okay. Any comments from the public on the single member districts, alternatives one and two, or the current system for the at-large districts? I'm sorry, I meant at-large districts. Every, everybody else? Comments? Okay. So we'll move forward with those uh, for next the next meeting. Um, we now have agenda item six, which is, which is approval of invoices. And unless I missed them, I didn't see them in the packet. So are there new invoices? Are there new invoices, Mr. Lowack? Okay. No invoices, Mr. Chair. All right. Very good. Mr. Spitzer and Mr. Vos, no invoices. I'm sure there won't be any. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> any other business? Anybody have any comments, concerns, this is the speak now or forever hold your peace in terms of what you'd like to see for the next meeting. We've had a lot of good conversation about the municipalities. Um, yes, Mr. Weinkrantz. I'm just wondering if you could review for us quickly, Mr. Chairman, exactly what we're going to be put in front of us for voting uh, at our next meeting. Let's uh, ask Mr. Spitzer to do that since he's going to have to come up with the work product and then if he misses something, we can uh, let him know. Yes, uh, for the uh, single member district uh, alternatives, I believe the question was uh, to examine the possibility of putting uh, the city of Seminole into one uh, district, which would be District 6. And so there would be uh, parts of Seminole which are currently in District 5 and parts which are currently in District 7 would be moved into District uh, 6. And then uh, I believe the other question was uh, a, a, along a similar line with the city of Largo, where the boundary between District uh, 6 and 5 uh, toward the uh, eastern side of the county near the uh, airport, uh, those areas would be placed from, would go into uh, District 5 from District 6. Then uh, additionally, uh, you had uh, asked uh, for the at-large uh, residence areas to identify uh, how many cities are split and uh, how, in, in what sort of a, a manner? Is it a slight split or is it significant? Okay. Anybody have anything else to add that they would like to see at the next meeting uh, for Mr. Spitzer? Mr. Vos. Thank you, Chairman. I just want to let you all know kind of the mechanism by which ultimately this is going to be passed on to the Board of County Commissioners, okay? The uh, charter uh, provision that created this board calls for two main things in that regard. The county redistricting board shall develop one or more proposals for the redistricting of the four commission districts and three at large. So as we've discussed previously, you can submit to the Board of County Commissioners multiple alternatives if that is the will of the board with regard to both single member and at large. You don't have to drill down to one for each. Um, those are communicated to the board by your adoption of a final report. Uh, Mr. Spitzer and I have discussed this. The final report that's going to be prepared in draft is going to be relatively short and bare bones, it's basically a cover letter that would ultimately be signed by your chairman that explains what you all did, what you were charged to do, the alternatives you all developed, and then ultimately the um, alternatives or uh, proposals that you are provide providing to the Board of County Commissioners for their consideration. So what you'll have at that meeting will be the alternatives that Mr. Spitzer will be developing and then a roughed out uh, final report with everything but the final answer, what you all have decided to put forward as proposals all put together so that you all can, in its basic form, approve that final report at your next meeting. 
Mr. Bush, may I also ask you to just very briefly at sure. the next meeting, just put up that charter language again and kind of remind us the hierarchy, what's mandatory, what's a guideline um, in terms of what we can and cannot consider and what we should and should not consider. Just, I think at the very beginning of the meeting, that would be a good refresher for all of us to sure. kind of put us in the right mindset for that. We'll go ahead and uh, have that put into the deck for uh, the next meeting, and I'll be glad to go through that. Thank you, sir. Any Thank other you. questions, comments, concerns? Ms. Ambrose. Just a fast question. You said the next meeting is next Wednesday the 3rd, correct? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. 6 p.m. Uh, right here. Mr. Everett. Yeah, just um, not to put any pressure on anybody, but do you know when we would see the packet prior to the meeting? I mean, I know we've got to physically go in and check the Pinellas County email to see if we have something. So um, it'd be nice if we kind of had a heads up when we thought that was going to hit the press, so to speak. You, we'll have that out to you um, Friday. It'll be late Friday, but Friday. So if we check our email around 4 o'clock Friday, 5 o'clock, something like that? I, I wouldn't commit to, to that you. time. It might be, it might be uh, after hours. Check it 7 a.m. Saturday morning. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, Ms. Nall. I know we discussed this a few times, but just bringing up the only other city that is split at this point, if we look at an alternate map, uh, would be Pinellas Park. Hmm. Would it be possible to group that into the moving Seminole all into six and Largo all into five? There's a little sliver of Pinellas Park that is in District 7. Then only St. Petersburg and Clearwater would have splits. We're um, trying to, s oh yeah, okay, I see it right, right by Kenneth City. It seems very small. I'm one, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Spitzer, did you have a response to that, or? I I do. Um, we can, we will look at that. Um, I'm a little familiar with that area, um, and uh, we'll we'll look at that. Uh, that that policy there, uh, I, the I, w I would say that the the charter requires you to consider where feasible utilizing municipal boundaries. It's it's not an absolute, and the other you know sort of the competing policies here are are using uh, you know major roadways. Uh, things where it's easy to understand where the boundary might be, uh, not diluting minority voting strength, things like that. But but we can we can look at this um, this boundary uh, as I'm looking at it on my machine. Uh, it's uh, it's 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 not just a a simple. Uh, Grouping of of census blocks, I can tell where it's. Uh, it'll be a little bit more complicated to do this, but but I, I will will do our best to uh, to do this. And and by the way, then if Mr. Chair, if this if doing things like this results in an imbalance in population, uh, you know, we would need to have uh, use our best judgment to make that up in some other way. I think I'd be okay if you make those like alternatives four and five or something so that way you don't, if, if it turns out where we're violating a principle of population or minority access or something that we hold sacrosanct, I don't want us to throw away what you've already proposed. So and we don't need to overly complicate it next week where we're nitpicking stuff. So if you wanted to make those different maps for the Seminole and Largo and Pinellas Park issue, uh, or you know, one map that shows that whole principle that might be like an alternative four. That might be the easiest way to do that. Okay. Does that yes, make sir. sense to everybody else? Yeah. Hi. Okay. Uh, any other business, Mr. Boykins? Sorry, um, and I just I think we we would appreciate the data because you know a lot of us don't understand you know the census data. Um, so if there's an imbalance, I would just appreciate a, a deeper explanation than there's an imbalance here. Um, that's why we didn't do it. So just giving more information to us to to fully understand what that imbalance is. Is it population? Is it 
minority strength or whatever um, to, to better assess the situation. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, Mr. Rubel. I had um, one other just kind of a, wanted to suggest that perhaps I know when we first started this, uh, we had been given an option on the at-large districts that was relatively, rather than just keeping the current, so what we're really proposing now is current or two alternatives. Uh, there was a, I, I thought a, a Mr. Spitzer had made a recommendation uh, for an alternative that took into account some very minor changes relative to census blocks that had had some uh, movement in them. I thought maybe it would be worthwhile for us next week to consider uh, that earlier alternative for the at-large districts because our two alternatives are relatively major changes to the to the uh, current system and we haven't we'd be left with an alternative which is either very radical change or let's say significant change uh, or no change and and perhaps there is we should revisit a modest change related to the census uh, census information okay mr spitzer is that a possibility Yes, uh, and to, let's, uh, to be clear, there were, the, the census can change block shapes from time to time, uh, and normally we don't really care about that if the blocks are sort of in the middle of a district, but if they're on the border between two different districts, then that matters. And so uh, what we had done early on was identified those blocks where the the shapes had changed and it, it affected a, a boundary line. And so we had assigned those blocks uh, based on our best professional judgment to what districts they would logically be assigned to. And it was not a significant amount of population. That's one sort of a housekeeping change. The other change that we discussed, but uh, I don't know if the board really moved on it, was to go beyond that and, and make sort of other kinds of housekeeping changes. Um, and I think, Mr. Chair, that uh, perhaps you had suggested something like that, but, but uh, that was not uh, acted on by the board. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that if, if what I'm hearing Ms. Rupel say, and I, and I do remember us discussing this, I think we'd like to see because the, the current charter language wasn't in existence when these districts were adopted. So I think we want confirmation or uh, alteration to ensure that the current system would meet those, uh, that charter requirement and whether that alteration is very, very minor. I mean, we're not looking to change the current system, but I wanna make sure the county commission knows based on the charter language, the current system is fine or based on the charter language, we should move this little piece of tarpon that's in district two to district one or district one to district two or wh whatever it is. Um, is that kind of what you're saying? Yes, it would be looking at an alternative that helps us reach the objective without significant change uh, versus the two alternatives we have that are relatively significant change in the boundaries uh, without, an, without an alternative that is a more modest level of change to deal with uh, housekeeping issues. Okay. Mr. Spitzer, is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, Mr. Weinkrantz. I have something a little off topic, but something might need to be addressed. Our vice chair has not made the last two meetings. Uh, uh, do we have the expectation that she will be at the next one, or should we get ahead of things just to make sure that we have a vice chair seated uh, in the event we need one for the next meeting? I, I, I know this is a little bit far afield, but... I'm just making sure that, that we're prepared. That'd be Mr. Vo's. That's a Robert Rules of Order question, I, and I don't know the answer. If I something happened to me right now, who would chair the rest of the meeting? I don't know the answer to that. That's my point. I can answer that one. If if it came to be that uh, that your chair was unavailable at the final meeting and your vice chair was unavailable at the other meeting, the first order of business would be to elect a new chair for that meeting. Okay. So we can sort that out. That's okay. Easy. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else? Okay, we're adjourned. We'll see you on November 3rd. Spread the word. Thank you.